This tutorial will take you through how to create a subtractive sculpture, an expressive form in three dimensions from developing the concept through the finish. For this unit, we're going to be using plaster blocks. Subtractive sculpture is the oldest form of sculpture and it involves removing material, usually by carving. For this project, we're going to be uh, using a block and removing material to create our forms. We're specifically going to be looking at how we can create symbolic intent in our work. Symbolism is how we reflect an emotion or an idea rather than what we see in the natural world. We can look at how indigenous cultures have done that as well as how abstract artists have inspired forms and shapes to evoke an emotion or symbol. The way we're going to approach that is by doing some research. And it's completely up to you how you decide to approach this project. Do you want to look at some indigenous cultures to take your inspiration? For example, the Maori, the Tikis, or the totems of the Northwest Americans. Uh, you can look at how they use symbolism in the creation of their works to create sculpture. Or you can look at some modern abstract artists like John Arp, Magdalena Abakanowitz, Henry Moore, Barbara Hepworth, and there's more. And how they use organic forms and abstract shapes to represent a positive and negative space that can convey also symbolism or an emotion. Now, I spent a fair amount of time casting plaster in milk cartons to create these blocks that we can use. They are all around the same size-ish and they're all made of solid plaster. First you should really consider the shape and scale of your plaster block. This may influence the design you come up with. Draw your design from all angles and consider how it will flow from one side to another to make it interesting in the round. Before you can start carving, even though you have your design fully planned out, you need to set up your workspace. So you need to have newspaper laid out. I'm using a scrap piece of plaster for this demonstration, so don't mind all the texture. Once you have your design, you need to start transferring some of those lines and points that you want to carve onto the form. You can use a pencil to lightly sketch those in, and it's okay if it makes a little bit of an indent into the plaster. The tools that we will use to carve into the plaster are rasp. They are textured files and they come in different textures and thicknesses and curves and angles for you to use depending on the shape and the amount of material you want to remove. The bigger the texture, the more material it will remove. If it's round, it'll carve out in more of a round shape. If it's flat, it'll carve out in more of a flat shape. You wanna position your hand that's holding the sculpture, the block, away from the tool so you don't accidentally file your fingers because that will not feel so good. Work around the sculpture to get an idea of how much material you need to remove on the different parts. So here's a completed abstract inspired plaster sculpture that's carved. You could also do this with animal inspired or any of the other approaches. Here's an example of me carving an animal, spirit animal inspired one. This is out of a different material, but the process is the same. <laughs> The main thing is to create positive and negative space, make sure it's interesting from all sides, create a flowing design that has personal symbolism, and use a variety of techniques. And of course, we're going to also paint them. The assessment for the project is broken up into these categories. The concept, how you paint it in the end, the carving techniques that you use, and the wide variety of use of them to make it look interesting in the round, meaning from all angles, and also how well you cleaned up after each class. That last one's going to be important. 
Carefully fold up the newspaper uh, with all of the plaster dust in there, making sure that it doesn't come off. And you can use a little brush to brush off any of the plaster off of the tools. Fold that up and put that directly in the bin. At this point, it's really important for me to tell you not to leave fingerprints on everything or anyone. If you do get fingerprints on you or handprints on you, it is pretty easy to get off, but we don't want the plaster dust blowing in the air. Once you have finished carving your sculpture, then you're going to be ready to paint. The idea is that we're going to be painting the sculpture in one solid color and then using a little bit of speckle paint on it to create it so it looks like it's carved out of stone or marble. Here are some student examples and they also show some different approaches to the sculpture process. As always, my students should refer back to the art site and our infographic for all of the important details that they can refer to throughout. Once the sculpture is completed, we'll work on a reflection. These are the questions that are on our art site. Now you're ready to begin.